Today's topic is DMS. When I say DMS, I'm talking about database migration service. In database migration service, what we do is we do a migration basically. So in that case, in case of migration, there can be two type of migration happen. There can be two type of migration happen. Let me show you. Once I go to google.com and type for AWS DMS, it goes to AWS data migration service. Once I click on database migration service, it will show you the two types of migration service possible. One is heterogeneous, second is homogeneous. In heterogeneous, what happens is when you when you do like different databases shifting. When I say different databases shifting, you have on premises something else, but you want to convert that to another type of database. Similarly, in homogeneous, what happens is you have on premises Oracle system and that you want to migrate to Oracle RDS. In that cases, what you do is you go for homogeneous. So in short, there are two types of DMS, database migration service. One is heterogeneous, one is homogeneous. To explain you more on this, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to create one SQL instance quickly because that will take a lot of time to create 10 to 5 to 10 minutes it takes generally. I'm going to create it with standard create. And here I'm choosing Microsoft SQL Server. Here I'm choosing Amazon RDS, SQL Server Express Edition 2019. Database one is fine. Admin and here I'm choosing password. And when you scroll down, I'm looking for 2 GB instance. And here I'm taking 20 GB as a storage. I don't want to OT any auto scaling. I'm quickly creating this because I have explained you in the RDS session how to create it. So connectivity wise, I'm saying don't connect to EC2 computer source. Network type is IPv4. I need public access, public accessible. And I want to create a new security group. And I'm just saying DMS underscore SQL underscore SG. This name I'm giving. Availability zone preference, no. I don't want to own performance metrics. So this is saying it will cost you 45 US dollar per month. I'm fine with it. So I'm going to create this database. So once this database is created, I will explain you what I'm talking about. But in short, I'm going to discuss about database migration service. Data migration service can be of two types. When you do migrations, there are two types of migration possible. One is heterogeneous. Heterogeneous means like use cases where customer is having different database but they want to move to Aurora database, for example, or like these type of databases. For example, Oracle to Aurora, MySQL to RDS, Microsoft SQL to Aurora, MongoDB to DocumentDB, Oracle to Amazon Redshift, like these type of databases, which is source and destination are not same. Source and destination are not same. In case of homogeneous, the Oracle one, you want to move to Amazon RDS for Oracle. Where source is Oracle, 
destination is also oracle in that case what you do is you go for homogeneous database migration service so today what we are going to do is we are going to do uh, from my own sql own premises sql to s3 that is kind of that is kind of homogeneous or heterogeneous right basically you have homogeneous example when you are moving to the s3 so in that case what steps you need to follow is there are predefined steps you have to follow i will upload this article also on the github link first of all uh, you have to create one dms role on that dms role you have to give s3 full access and rds full access why why i'm giving full access here let me tell you because what we are going to do in that use case is we are going to create one sql server right so what we will be doing in that case is we will be doing there will be one sql sql right and we want to move our sql data to s3 this is my s3 there's a bucket there is s3 bucket in this bucket i want to move data from sql to this bucket right so that type of migration i want to do you can try with sql to my sql you can try with my sql to another data type sql to no sql that all databases support is there i will show you one way you can go for another use cases example supportingly so here i'm going to choose sql as a source and destination as s3 sql will be my source this is my source and s3 will be my destination destination this will be my destination so that is that is the purpose that i have created sql instance here that is the purpose i have created sql instance if you go here i have created a sql instance right just to show you how to how it is working i will click on refresh and check the latest state of it still it is creating so this is probably going to take 8 to 12 minutes of time and uh, what we can do till the time is discuss on the steps like i said first step would be to create a role first step second part would be you have to create a dms service and when you create a dms service you need a replication instance what is replication instance what you want to do here is what you want to do is there is a sql right from sql you want move you want to move data to s3 s3 right you want to move data from sql to s3 in that case you need some kind of service in between so that it will pull up the data from sql and store the data on s3 right so that part is done that part is done using replication instance so in short if you ask me ritesh what is replication instance i will give you answer rit this replication instance is an ec2 machine itself 
this is EC2 machine. This is equivalent to EC2 machine and that EC2 machine will be responsible for creating a task and moving a data. That replication instance will be responsible. Under this replication instance, you have to configure two things. One is rep instance that I already told you replication instance. Then you have to configure source. In case of source, our source will be SQL, right? I have created MS SQL instance, right? Similarly, my source will be SQL and destination, destination in my case would be S3. So you have to do this thing creates a replication source, replication instance, then source, then destination, and, and last, you have to create task. And when you create a task, you have to execute it. Execute it. These all steps I will do in next, probably, uh, 40 to 45 minutes. I will tell you how to create all the steps. So first thing first, I am going to create one DMS role for you. What I am doing for this is, I am going to IAM service. Click on IAM service. And create a role. Click on roles, click on creating a role, AWS service, right? Here I'm going to choose AWS service and here I will be choosing DMS. Database Migration Service, DMS, which says allow Database Migration Service to call AWS Service on your behalf. Click Next. Like I told you, you need S3 full access and RDS full access. Why? Why I need S3 full access? And why need I, I need RDS full access? Because in your case, you will be giving RDS as a source and S3 as a destination. That's the reason I'm going to take RDS full access and S3 full access here in this rule. And I will use this rule in task. I will use that role in task. And when task will be executing, that task will require S3 full access and RDS full access. So that's the reason I'm creating this task. So here I'm going and writing a permission S3 full access, this one. And go for another service, which is RDS full access. Next, role name. Enter a meaningful name to identify this role. Here I'm giving uh, EMS home row, DMS home row. 
where I have the policies added as Amazon RDS full access, Amazon S3 full access, create row. My role has been created, DMS home role. Cool. One step is done. My one step is done, right? Now, second step is create a DMS service. Before creating a DMS service, I want to check my instance is created or not. Go to RDS and refresh now. Still, it is creating, right? It is backing up. Probably in few minutes, this instance will be up and running. Let me refresh again. Still, it is backing up. So we have to wait for a couple of minutes here. And till the time, what I'm going to do is create a DMS service. So I will look for DMS here. DMS. This is the service that we are going to do. Database migration service. Database migration service. Manage database migration service. If you open it, this service in a separate window where you have to create a database migration service first. Here it says you have to create an endpoint first, right? So if you go with this, it already says right homogeneous database migrations, heterogeneous database migrations, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create one replication instance first because it says to start using AWS database migration service, you need a replication instance which will be used to run your migration task. So that AMS service at least need one replication instance. Now let me check again if it is backed up. Click refresh. Wow, this instance is up and running now. Now let me connect to this instance and create some data in it. So what I'm doing, going to do is click on database, copy this endpoint, copy and open SQL client. Here I'm going to open SQL client, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to open this. Here I'm pasting this URL. And here I'm choosing admin as a username. And while creating this, this instance, I have given password, right? Same password I'm using here and click on connect. Wow, you are connected with database, right? Now I will, with the help of few ready-made commands, I'm going to create one table and insert some data in it. I'll go to this website, data to fish. Here I'm going to create a database. Here I'm going to create a database. Right click, new database. Database name I'm keeping it like test underscore database test underscore database and click OK. Once you click OK, you start creating tables. Copy. Go to this database, test database. Right click and click on new query. Paste it here. Create table products. I want to create product table, right? 
products table where care price integer these two columns i want to create in it products table i am going to create and under the products table i have two columns one is product name one is price right similarly what i am going to do is i want to create data like this product name price desktop computer 800 rupees laptop 1200 tablet 200 monitor 350 i want to create this data and this is a script copy the script insert script and go to management console press enter and run this script so once you run this script execute it says five rows affected and completion time is just now right it's a completion time and plus five equal 30 is indian standard time so indian standard time is five hours 40 30 minutes plus from the ust time now i want to see data how can you see a data using this query select star from products and you can see your data is available when i execute this it shows you desktop computer 800 laptop tablet monitor and printer cool right you have data now your database is up and running now you want to create a dms service for dms service you need to create first a replication instance. For replication instance, I'm going to click on this replication instance button and it will open this window for you. Where you need to provide a name, name in my case, I'm giving DMS hyphen demo. It says descriptive Amazon resource name, which is optional, you can leave it. This is also optional, you can leave it. Which instance you want to take for migration? I am saying I want to take 2 GB of instance. As high as your data is, you will require max capacity of machine for migration. For example, you are saying your data in your data in, in TBs. In that case, you cannot take 2 GB of instance, right? In that case, you might require 32 GB, 256 GB, 384 GB, that kind of instances, heavy instances, which is responsible for high processing, right? In that case, I'm using 2 GB only. And engine version I'm taking as 3.4.7. Do you want multi-AZ? Multi-AZ means once your migration is started and during migration, if one availability zone is going down, then how you want to deal that behavior? Do you want to go for dev test, which is single AZ? And do you want to go for production workload, which is multi-AZ? Multi-AZ means multiple availability zone supported even though one availability zone is impacted due to flood due to electricity issue due to political issue any issues still your migration will happen because aws will create different copies of your data in different regions so if you working with production application this is recommended to go with production workload but I'm just doing it for the demo. So I'm choosing dev or test workload here. Storage, how much storage you are looking for? Here I'm giving 30 GB of storage. For long files and cache transaction, this is required. 30 GB is fine for me. Which network you want? IPv4 or dual stack mode? I'm looking for IPv4. Which VPC you need? I'm seeing default VPC, replication subnet group default, 
do you if you choose this option AWS DMS will assign a public IP address to your application instance and you will be able to connect to databases outside of your VPC yes I want that for a moment of time go to advanced settings uh, here I'm not going to change anything probably only VPC uh, VPC security group here I'm going to check uh, let's randomly choose one security group, launch wizard 57. I'm going to work with this security group, launch wizard 57. That's it. I will tell you the purpose of it, why I availed launch wizard 57. You can add any. Later on, I would make changes in inbound and outbound role of this security group. So I've just randomly added launch wizard 57. That's it. Create this replication instance. So once you give this command to create replication instance, this will also take a couple of minutes of time to create instance. Because like I said, it is internally going to create one EC2 instance for you. And when it is going to create EC2 instance, it is going to establish database migration service also. When I say database migration service, what steps AWS will take in that case is first of all, it will create EC2 instance. Then it will also create, it will also create a database migration service. It will also install database migration service. So that will take probably five to seven, eight minutes of time. So we have to wait here for five minutes. Let me refresh. So we have to wait here till the time what I can do is I can move to next steps. Next step is creating a source and creating a destination. So let me create destination or let me create source till the time. What I'm going to do here is there is, you can see endpoints, right? These endpoints, you can create endpoints till that moment of time. This DMS demo is coming live, which is in creating state. You can go to the endpoints. Once you go to Endpoints, you can click on endpoint, create endpoint. Here it is asking you two things. One is source endpoint, another is target endpoint. In source endpoint, I'm saying it is a RDS DB instance, right? So you need to check this option, click. So when you check this option, it will immediately start showing you RDS instances available in Mumbai region. <clears throat> in my case, I have database one, right, which is available here. So I'm going to select this database one. It is asking me endpoint identifier. I'm saying database one is fine. It is asking me source engine. I'm saying Microsoft SQL Server. Already it has identified Already it has identified it is Microsoft SQL Server. Access to endpoint database using secret manager or manually. In my case, I did not store my user credentials to secret manager. I have stored that information manually. So I'm going to click on this option, provide access information manually. Here in the place of username, it is admin, that's fine. And here I am going to write my password, admin 12345. All right, that password is there. Now I will go to secure socket layer SSL mode, which you can say none as of now. Now it asks for database name. 
Like I have created a database name, what you can do is you can copy this database name, rename test underscore database and paste here. So this is my test underscore database and point settings. There is nothing you need to change here. EMS key, nothing you need to change here. That's no need to change. Test endpoint connection. As of now, you want to test this connection, but your instance is deemed replication instance. That says not available as of now. If you go to uh, that screen where it was creating, me go to replication instances. I think still it is creating. Yes, still it is creating. So we have to wait for it to complete this. Till the time it is showing you replication instance DMS demo. But once you run it, it will give you error, right? The replication instance DMS demo is not active. So we have to wait for it. Till the time this endpoint is for source. And like I said, you have to create source also and destination also for migration, right? Because you are doing a migration from source to destination. In case of destination, what I want to do is I want to go to S3 bucket. So I'm going to create one S3 bucket quickly in a same region where my database is. So my database is available in Mumbai region, right? So I'm going to create one bucket, create a bucket in Mumbai region. Here I'm giving my DMS bucket Mumbai. And I'm going to create a bucket. This is my bucket is created successfully. Go to this bucket. Click on this. Right. Now I will go to destination task. This time I have created this one. This was a source task, right? Now I'm going to create an endpoint. And when I go to endpoint, this time I'm going to select create an endpoint and here I'm saying target endpoint. In target endpoint, name I'm giving is S3 endpoint, any name you can give for DMS and target engine would be, what would be target engine in my case S3. But like I said, this migration can happen by two ways heterogeneous migrations homogeneous applications migrations so you will get both the options here in target engine you get a lot of list mysql mysql serverless postgres document db dynamo db elastic search kinesis snapshot open search redshift s3 all options are available here what I'm going to choose here is I want to push my data to S3. So once you push your data to S3, it asks for sub service access role ARN. And that is what you have created one role, right? I have created one of the role, this one, DMS home role. This role you have to pick up and you have to get ARN of this. Copy this ERN, go to database migration service back and enter this. This is a role. Bucket name, bucket name in my case, I have created a bucket, right? This is my bucket name, my DMS bucket Mumbai. So I'm going to choose this bucket name. Bucket folder, do you have any? No, I don't have any. That's it. Endpoint settings, nothing. Tags, nothing. 
test connection, nothing. Just let me check if my uh, DMS demo is active now or not. Go to go back to database migration service and refresh here. So it is still in creating stage. We have to wait for more time here. So we have to wait now. Nothing we can do till the time this application instance is not completed. Till the time, let me, this one is target endpoint and run test. It will say you, the application instance is not active. We have to wait for it. Let's wait for two, three minutes. I'm on mute for next two, three minutes. Yes, now you can see demo, DMS demo is available, right? Status of it, it is showing as available. I will go to my source bucket, source part now, and I will test it now. I run test. Once I click on run test, let's see if my instance is able to have a connection with SQL Server or not. Let's see it. It is causing some issues. Let me um, do one thing here. Let me go to let me go to my database and check what's the problem. Go to database. Click on security group and this is my security group. I think that is causing some issues. Let me test it. Go to inbound rule and under the inbound rule, add it inbound rule. Okay. I think only source is allowed. Only one IP is allowed. Hmm. That got failed. Test application failed, failed to connect network. So what you can do in that case is go to the security group, go to and remove this and open it for all and save rules. Now let me test it again. Go to database migration, run test. Let's see now it is working or not. Ooh, it says connection is successfully made. Let's create this endpoint now. 
and you can see both the endpoints now, right? Similar way, I have tested a connection for database one. Let me test for S3 endpoint also. Go to S3 endpoint, where it is, this one, and run this test. it is working or not but let me try it refresh both my endpoints are ready this is my source this is my target now last thing you have to create is database migration task database migration task so you have to execute this task now under this task you will be having source as a database and this will be your target s3 so what I'm going to do in that case is clicking on database migration, create task. So under the create task, you will enter task identifier and just three same copy task. And application instance, which instance you want to use? I have, you want to use DMS demo, right? I have only one application instance available. What will be your source? In case of source, database one is source. Target database point. That will be S3 endpoint for DMS. Right? This is source. This is target. Here we have three options, which is very, very important to discuss. Very, very important. Migration type. So what you want to do with migration? You want to migrate existing data or you want to migrate existing data and replicate ongoing changes or replicate data changes on. In my case, I'm saying migrate existing data. But if you are choosing this option, replicate data changes only, replication is not possible on this instance. Why? Because the replication is not supported on the lower version of SQL Server. This is Express Edition, very, very basic version of SQL. And I cannot show you demo of replication. Replication demo is going to cost you very, very high. So I'm just giving you flavor here and using this option as migrate existing data. That's it. Then task setting. In task setting, you have to... What about the uh, other option, please? Um, migration type. If you can, please go to the migration type. The second, second one. Ongoing changes. Existing data and replicate ongoing changes. This is same as this. Same as. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. So migrate existing data. Editing mode. Here you do not need to change anything. This is target table preparation mode. In case you want to do tables after the changes, you can change the settings, but I'm not going to change that settings. Here you have to change it. Table mappings. In table mappings, you are saying add new selection rule. Under the add new selection rule, I'm clicking on this and I'm seeing choosing a schema, enter a schema. What schema I have in my case? 
this is my uh, schema i believe dbo is a schema here right so go to tables yes dbo is a schema by default dbo source table name what is your source table name products this is my source table name i am not sure do we need to add a percentage in the last or not i think we need to add it and include that's it where schema name is like this and source table name is like products fine let's create this task create task once you create this task it will start showing you it is in copy task creation in progress probably we have to wait for some time to see the status of it let me refresh till it says copy task creation in progress so what is gonna do so task migration service will establish a connection with this sql server copy this data of this table and add that data to s3 s3 bucket so that is the task you have assigned with the database migration task let me refresh it says it is ready it is ready so let me select this and go to action and i think this is already started right starting database migration task so there is no need to run manually automatically it has started because at the time of configuring the task there was one option that after the creation of task you want to execute this task automatically or not so now it is showing you starting let's wait for some time is running probably in few minutes it will be showing you exact status it says load complete so according to this this is done and if you want to see table loaded is one and row wise if you want to see you can click on this task and check the status of table statistic and table statistic if you refresh it should showing you five right five rows there was five rows in my products so let's start from products five rows right that five rows has gone to my bucket now if i refresh you will see dbu products under the product i have csv file and if i download this file and open it it will show you data of sql table which is product table this is a
like this. Did you understand this? Yes. Well, what I've understood is that what we've done is that we uh, have uh, uh, migrated uh, uh, data from uh, uh, one uh, source to our destination, in this case, S3. But for us to do that, we, we have to follow the steps. We have to have a service, in our case, DMS, and uh, we created uh, uh, a replication instance. We, uh, uh, and uh, we also created tax. Yes. I believe it's, it, it looks like a lot of steps, but if we follow your steps without error, I believe we will arrive at the same result. Yeah, probably what you can do is, I have done this part, MS equal to S3. What you can do is MS equal to MS equal or MS my equal to MS equal or my equal to Dynamo DB. That combination wise, it depends on your use case. I can show you one example that I have done. Similar example you can create for another source and destinations. So which one of these is a uh, heterogeneous? My so, uh, SQL and so dyna dynamo. This, this, these heterogen means same database. Uh, the homogeneous means same databases. In our case, this uh, like same where we have the same this one. This is homogeneous. Rest okay. all are heterogeneous. Okay. Where source and destination are same, it will be called like hom homogeneous. Sorry, what what do you mean by same? Like uh, same schema or anything? Same else? database. Same database. Here, my C MS equal to MS equal. You are doing a migration. This is on premises. MS SQL and you want to migrate to cloud MS SQL. Source and destination are same. Mm -hmm. It will be called homogeneous migration. What about is if the versions are different? That also same. But in case you are changing the source and destination, it will be called heterogeneous. And that's where this comes into the picture, AWS database migration service. Here also database migration service comes into the picture because you might have different data type version, different database version. Here it can possible it is on 2017 and it is on 2019. This is quite possible, right? What about this uh, MS SQL to S3? Like, is there any setting to be done, like regarding to the uh, data types and all those things? No. So how how does this system knows that relevant mm -hmm. information? I, I have configured that information. I think you have joined that session late, right? Late, okay. Right. I'll have to go through that. Yeah. If, same for uh, uh, Dynamo DB as well. Like initially, we have to configure yes. those things. Yes, right. Have you come across any migration uh, in your project? Uh, I have done this migration 2017 to 2019 on cloud. Could you please uh, try and explain, like, what are the challenges you faced or difficulties or? Uh, difficulties that was a straightforward process first you have to create a report 
so first of all, you have to run one data schema conversion control data schema conversion tool. Schema conversion tool. <laughs> So you have to prepare this one first. Yeah, uh, that you have to run. That's a tool given by AWS that you have to run on your own premises server. It will publish a report. Once it publish a report, you need to check. Like it will suggest you what data types you have to change, what store procedures you have to change. what functions you have to change, what jobs will be impacted, entire report it will give to you. Then you will change everything and then you will move to uh, cloud version of it. Okay. So when, when, when you are doing all these things, like uh, do, uh, is there any help provided from a uh, database uh, engineer? Like in the company database engineer is must to have during the migrations is without it, database engineer you cannot move you should have very advanced level of knowledge on the database if you want to do a migration right so from cloud perspective you have to do all these settings yes right because I was able, I was helping one of the project. I was from the application team and there was a, some engineer from database team. I was from the cloud team and application team. We worked mutually in collaboration we have worked. So I yeah. assume that the data will be of more uh, into terabytes or something like that. It, so... was, it was 37 TB of data. But unfortunately, cloud don't support 37 TB of data as of now. The maximum support it has is 16 TB. So what we do in that case is we have removed a couple of uh, databases into separate, separate databases like microservices style database. Then we have created a connection between these. So you split into two or something? We something split else? into six. Six, okay. Yeah. Right. And uh, like, does it migration take place for few days or like how many, how much time it will take for all this process? For entire, I think 15, 16 months. It's not a day time. It's not a day activity. It would take a year, I would say. Oh, oh. Probably 15 to 16 months. We have took entire 10 engineers and all. It is not easy thing. Migration is not just it's not lift and shift. Mm -hmm. You have to actually re re architect also. For for all of the projects, or depends on the company to company. Depends on the company. Most if you are also going for the re lift and shift, only you can do in this same version. If version is changed, you have to actually change the code. Mm -hmm. So very rarely it will come to see like. Uh, it will take in... years. If project is in stable stage. Multiple users are using that application and database size is good. It will take years of time. It is not, not straightforward activity. Mm -hmm. Only data type changing takes month of time. Database data types changes. I was go, going through the uh, YouTube video. One of the uh, uh, person YouTuber was talking about this. So I'm not sure, like uh, it's, it was talking about uh, database engineer mostly take care of this job. Uh, only little bit you can able to share it, something like that. But I don't know how far it is right or wrong. I'm not sure about it. That's why I was asking. It depends on company to company. Some companies have very segregated responsibilities about data engineers, or you can say database engineer. Some companies have limited database engineers right mm -hmm. so in certain cases i did see that application engineer is also doing a migration of database migration that is mm -hmm. also possible company to company depends it differs okay yeah in my case there was two leads 
lead architect involvement from database side. From our side, I was cloud architect plus application impact side. Then we do a migration. Probably with six to eight engineer, we took around, uh, like I said, more than one year of time for one database. And we did a migration for three databases, in fact. And uh, once uh, transfer, how do you verify this data? Like, is there any pro procedure? Uh, uh, manually. Procedure? Manually. Really, manually is the way. No, that 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 will give you that DMS tool. I'm talking about data schema control. And there is there was another tool I forget about it that will tell you high level report of it comparison between two databases. But ultimately, you have to do a lot of testing. And in year of time frame, I am including that time of testing also. Probably four to six months we have spent on testing itself. for the next meeting you can complete this task and we will connect again next saturday it is fine happy learning